Um, my name is Steve All. I'm an OpenStreetMap contributor and I have been for about five years. Um, the American Cycling Association, or, or ACA, represents nearly 100,000 members in the United States. And it's a primary champion of the United States Bicycle Route System, or USBRS. So we begin the first part of this presentation from Kerry Irons, a tireless volunteer with ACA implementing the USBRS. Um, Kerry's on a ski trip he planned months ago, so he, uh, he and, and ACA and OCMUS asked me to present to you here today. Um, in their current incarnation, uh, bicycle routes at a national level in the United States have a history going back to the 1970s, including the Bike Centennial Route 76 near here, which continues to march westward across the Midwest. And today the system is vibrant and growing. Many people have been working for many years to realize this visionary plan, now rather well established. Um, implementation of the of United States bicycle routes is state at a time and, and route at a time. Of our 50 states, intentions are for 49 of them to have a U.S. bicycle route. Ah, Hawaii. Um, right now, there's almost 10,000 kilometers of U.S. BRs in a dozen states. And these are just some of the many organizations and state departments of transportation, or DOTs, that are contributing to the vision of the U.S. BRS. And key among these is OSHTO, the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. And they offer approval to finalized routes by each state that applies for its United States bicycle route to become part of the national network. To be more specific, I'll let you read these elements of what the USBR is and isn't. Um, skipping ahead a bit, Carrie of ACA explained these points to me. Um, and once again, I'm Steve All. I'm, I'm an OSM contributor that Kerry connected with. I'm not an, an ACA member, but I do love to bicycle and I love to map. And I've actually developed a bicycle route numbering protocol for my county using OpenStreetMap. And so starting in 2009, um, I saw that OSM's national bicycle routes in the United States were incorrect. And by early 2013, the situation in OpenCycleMap had become very messy. Open Cycle Map or OCM, Open Street Map Cycle Map layer, rendered with a whole lot of errors as, as contributors were confused about both actual and proposed routes. But OCM had potential to channel this vision of the USBRS and it seemed possible to untangle this. Oh, yeah. Um, this last point that the system is planned but only partially implemented or built is, is key. And in the late 2000s, a task force began to express a vision. And Kerry, as a volunteer representing ACA, he, he saw this vision. And the vision partly became a corridor plan, seen here. Um, the solid lines that you see in the east and the midwest, they, they represent actual US bike routes already approved by OSHTO. And the semi-transparent lines, which is most of the system, are these 50 mile wide corridors where one day a US bicycle route might exist. A route corridor is the first step of what becomes a fairly long planning process with many people involved, including state DOTs. A corridor is an early stage of a route, but it's not an actual route. And a key point is that a corridor is not even a proposed route. Oops, sorry. Um, after this map was, was uh, with the initial corridors was published in 2009, at least one OpenStreetMap contributor didn't really understand that. And he entered into OpenStreetMap corridors as proposed or actual routes. And a lot of people became confused looking at OpenCycleMap or OCM. Um, the cycle map layer. Well, meanwhile, back in the States, ACA was doing the, the roll up the sleeves work of realizing the vision of the US bicycle routing system, starting with, you know, working with states one at a time. And, and these are some of the steps that, that they take to do that. And while the US BRS was being developed, asking important questions like these, ACA was publishing its own route maps. Some of ACA's non-USBR routes either roughly or exactly follow USBR corridors. And that was actually by intention and design. So the coalescing of the ingredients to build on the ground consensus of, well, where is the national bike route in our state began in earnest on many fronts and in many states. 
And ACA discovered that each state's so-called project to implement a USBR became slightly different from one another, but all of them hopefully arrive at a finish line of an application by that state's Department of Transportation to OSHTO for route approval. And after that, the route officially goes from proposed USBR to actual USBR. Between 1982, with the approval of USBR 76, and 2009, when that corridor plan was approved, implementing the, the system was pretty slow going. No new routes were approved until spring of 2011. And by spring of 2013, the system was enjoying a new growth spurt with several new routes in several new states. A geographic representation that could both capture the system's intention of how it's growing as well as its current reality begins to be imagined by a lot of people as a potential map. Hmm, could this be a job for OpenStreetMap? As ACA sharpened focus on how to develop draft routes with the states prior to OSHTO application, certain important steps emerged. During this we learn as we go process, ACA discovered that having a dynamic electronic map is critical. And this becomes another key point. And Kerry discovered that OpenStreetMap might be able to help. However, here's the bad news. After the corridor plan was published in 2009 and corridors were wrongly entered into OpenStreetMap as routes during 2011 and 2012, it was determined that if OSM is to be a good tool, it really has to erase all of the confusion. And there was a lot of confusion in the map. During late 2012 and early 2013, it was imagined and discussed in talk US threads that we could lay down USBRs as correct chalk lines on our, on our uh, OSM watercolor using the, the cycle map layer in OpenStreetMap. And so the good news is, is really the rest of this talk. We, we fixed it, um, largely by collaboration and, and good, clear communication and leveraging the existing tools like our wiki, and the, multiply, the, the multiplier effect of, of crowdsourcing, this project now largely runs under its own power. And I hope it can inspire you to do the same, whether it's a national project or a state or local project, and whether it's routing or transportation based, or, or it isn't. Like, if you just want to coordinate what it might take to better develop walking trails, or how to get GTFS transit data into your region of the map, or, or one of an infinity of other potential useful projects that leverage OSM. And with this slide, Kerry has kind of fast forwarded from 2012 to 2013. So let's pause and, and rewind what happened during 2013, looking at the nuts and bolts of exactly how he and I did this. Largely speaking, it was just two people, Kerry and I, involved in serious email collaboration, though of course each of us stands fairly tall on the shoulders of our fellow project volunteers. In Kerry's case, that's ACA, and in my case, that's OpenStreetMap. In 2012, Kerry saw the, the mess of inaccurate national bicycle routes in cycle map layer, yet he and I both saw potential for OpenStreetMap to visually utter a national harmony of correct US bicycle routes. And seeing that our efforts could complement one another, Kerry and I connected via post to the Talk US pages and then directly via email. I, I think to myself, OpenStreetMap has freeform tagging existing hierarchical bike network stratification, and renderers that support and resolve these with near real-time display. So with the right syntax and structure meshing with our good intentions, we can express the semantics to describe this national bicycle network here in the USA. In short, we can do this. Carrie and I sharpened our semantics to match our syntax to paint routes into the map. This include whether horses or carts come first. Um, a statewide project must come first in the project to turn a 50 mile wide corridor into even a proposed US bicycle route. But once we do, most of the hard work is done as then it becomes really easy to change OpenStreetMap from displaying dashed lines into solid lines representing the route after OSHTO approval. We just remove the, the state equals proposed tag. This path and, and other key points sometimes had to be explained to newcomers repeatedly. So how we get from here to there and how the map can help us do so remains clear. And this, this brings along newcomers sharing exactly the same understandings. During April, more email communication between Carrie and I builds further trust and understanding. And Carrie says, let's stick to national as, as that's what the USBRS is. And I say, you keep talking about projects in each state. Now, now I know that that means that, that each state's route is really just a square in the big checkerboard of the larger national network. It, it's part politics in, 
In the USA, each state is responsible for transportation networks. What we're trying to fashion is a national network like the interstate system, but it's also part database, computer science, and, and syntax. The pieces have to fit together to make both the political realities and the tagging structure and renders that we use in OpenStreetMap work together. And we need to be able to communicate this to others, whether mappers or departments of transportation folks or a state bicycle advocacy nonprofit trying to piece together a proposed route. So some thought before we hit the ground running truly was required. We fit together the US bicycle route system and OpenStreetMap in all their gory realities and all the machinations that it takes for them to grow and evolve as they do over time. And the colors that you see here, I, I realize it's kind of hard to read the, the dark blue um, for local. Um, were, are the same ones that OpenCycleMap uses to represent the various levels of the bicycle routes around the world. In essence, this is a, a mathematical mapping. Um, logical infrastructure in OpenStreetMap like which level of the hierarchy for which routes, as well as accommodating the realities in the actual world. For example, um, <coughs> Delaware, Georgia, and other states already have statewide bicycle networks, some of them with numbers, and, and many of these are already even in OpenStreetMap. Um, but what about the odd ducks, like Adventure Cycling Association's own proprietary commercial routes and the 5,000 kilometer long routes like East Coast Greenway and Mississippi River Trail that don't really fit into existing categories? Well, we discussed and brainstormed and eventually fashioned together some buckets into which everything might be tossed. We started here and good discussion, knowing that we could f fix it a bit into our future, but it would get harder as time went on, so we tried to get it right first. Further email builds trust and understanding, and Carrie and I are on the right track. And there, there, there was sort of a large gulp moment when we realized that we intend to use a live plastic map to channel a national consensus. But we really couldn't goof it up much worse than it already was in late 2012, so let's do this. And you know, you have to think, is this hubris? It, really, it wasn't. It was, it was more like, good intentions meet good project management. Um, we, we posited that this is doable, especially when carry represents a national bicycle routing consensus, and I know how to play syntax on keyboards. Um, along the way, a wider consensus um, helped us determine that we were complementing each other pretty well. And in years past, like I mentioned, um, I'd already done similar uh, proposed bike, bicycle route mapping using open cycle map in my little county in California. You can't quite see it, but those are all numbered routes. Um, ask me about Santa Cruz CycleNet, or you can read about it on OSM's wiki pages or, or on the internet. So I determined Carrie and I need a test, a short path to, to partial completion that, that we can map our intentions. And this is true, especially as Carrie is not a mapper, but knows what should be mapped. And I can map, but I don't always know what the intentions are. So again, just articulate clearly and match syntax to semantics. So Carrie and I continue to understand each other a little bit better. I understand that it's important for the map to not get ahead of the route. Carrie understands that rendering takes time. And at a certain point, I try a test run to channel Carrie's intentions of removing four of the most egregious US bicycle route errors in, that are in OpenStreetMap. And it's successful, and it demonstrates to both of us that a short path of partial completion can happen. You know, our intentions can be mapped. So for me, it's about intentions as I know how to map, but for Kerry, it's about the map because he knows what's, what's intended. The, the initial pilot is a short path to knowing we can both work together and eventually complete this, but we're really just beginning to roll up our sleeves. We each begin to get a taste of what can both go right and wrong from the other's perspective, and this is really helpful to the rest of the process. With Carrie's guidance, I continue to further remove incorrect routes. And during the rest of June, we sharpen the boundary between actual routes and proposed routes in the US bicycle route system and make further progress comp um, completing and better defining how both of us understand these two subsets. We conversed, I mapped, and we watched. And meanwhile, the, the software quality assurance director and the, the other guy in the meeting room who knows a thing or two about intellectual property in me went looking for potential pitfalls and, and other disasters. Um, so ACA sells maps, and I was wondering, you know, is this going to get in the way of that? And we leave it slightly fuzzily unspecified exactly how ACA's routes do or will live in OpenStreetMap. But over time, these correctly and largely have stayed the way they have been. They're, they're expressed as um, state regional routes, the, the middle level below national. 
And so we get to this point where it was sort of important to, to pause and think and discuss. So, so we did. Um, Carrie's goal articulates a method for this vision that, that he and ACA have and shows his experience of keeping the scope reasonable so it isn't too large. Um, and after better establishing our roles, we continue what now seems like a full-fledged project in earnest. Carrie introduces me to specific state departments of transportation, web pages of routes as authoritative, and says, let's do these. And I explain technical details of data and tagging and the rendering software stack of OpenCycleMap so Carrie better understands what he's seeing and, and why. This helps Carrie understand that there's even different renderers like Waymarked Trails or, or WMT, sometimes known as the Lanvia renderer. And we, we were largely at the mercy of the, of the renderers and, and what they look like. For example, um, WMT properly parses routes as super relations, whereas OpenCycleMap doesn't. And OpenCycleMap also takes other coding shortcuts as we later discover. Um, but one route at a time, we have a good back and forth going via email. And eventually, all of the old data which are wrong are eliminated from OpenStreetMaps database. And so then on June 20th, we declare milestone one, that the Waymap trail render displays all actual United States bicycle routes, except for Alaska, including this East Coast Greenway and Mississippi River Trail, you know, odd duck or two. Um, and we share, we, we discover that we're both sharing project management. Um, and Kerry just has this longer term goal of wanting to connect projects in states to OpenStreetMap mappers. And I say, yeah, that's right, but we're not there yet. Oh, by the way, during the month of June, Carrie and I exchanged 113 emails between the two of us. It's pretty intense. Um, in July, we, we kind of suffer from, from lagging interactivity because open cycle map rendering can be on the slow side compared to the rapid back and forth that we had in email. Um, and again, I explain that we're at the, the mercy of the renderers. Um, and by July, Two pages in OpenStreetMaps Wiki are used to determine, I'm sorry, they're used to document both the United States bicycle route system in its historical context and as a how-to and a method to track and report project progress. These two pages give any seasoned OpenStreetMap mapper um, everything she needs to participate, simply with maybe a 10-minute review of these two pages. And Carrie now begins to see these web pages as a direct path to his goal of linking state USBR projects with OpenStreetMap mappers. During July, the, the untangling continues, and not completely by design, but rather by discussion and perhaps a bit of neglect, the middle tier of regional cycle networks ends up as this bucket containing both state routes and these quasi-private ACA routes. And then in summer, we define and, de and declare milestones two and three. Um, milestone two is defined that the Waymark trail render displays what Ashto defines as the entire system today. All the routes, the integration of the East Coast Greenway and the Mississippi River Trail as quasi-national routes, and super relations containing the, the multiple pieces of the state route relations. And then we declare milestone three, which is, and the open cycle map layer does this too. So by July 5th, you know, we're here, and Kerry takes these declarations to his people, you know, ACA management and their cartography department, and says, ready for your inspection. Um, and as Kerry awaits this feedback, I tune up the wiki to be highly accurate as both documentation and as a status reporting mechanism. This is complete by the third week of July, and I submit a talk to the post to, uh, post to the Talk US pages saying so, soliciting feedback. And Kerry reiterates his commitment to solicit the, OS the OSM community for mappers to connect to statewide project teams. But he has other summer commitments. But before he leaves, he asks me for some potential text that ACA might post on its blog about our efforts. And at the end of July, I, I send him a few paragraphs. But ACA's blog team is on vacation until late August. But then, by early September, ACA publishes on its blog this article, OpenStreetMap, a web-based mapping project. It describes OpenStreetMap is now being used as to, to communicate the, the US bicycle route system information both during a route planning process as dash lines and after routes are designated by OSHTO as solid lines. There are links to live maps, wiki pages, feedback, and other neat stuff. It's very cool. Um, meanwhile, Kerry remains busy on another project and declines my invitation to somehow coordinate his desire to connect mappers to statewide bicycle route coordinators with an upcoming OSM edit-a-thon. 
And I concur this potential match isn't really a good fit and defer to do nothing about it, sorry. Um, it's just, we're just not exactly sure how to mesh the two. Um, you know, nothing's perfect. Sometimes you get a, a good opportunity thrown right over the plate, but you still end up with a swing and a miss. We just chalk this up to small stuff and, and decide not to sweat it. Um, so Carrie and I agree that phase two of this project is to articulate how we solicit statewide USBR project participants and connect them to, US, to OSM mappers. Um, by mid-September, Carrie sends me a fairly plain Jane potential Talk US post, which contains a list of state projects and an open invitation for mappers. Um, it, it needed some sharpening up. And so in my reply, I identify OSM as working particularly well when someone or a group is really fired up to map. You have a distinct goal in mind, as in we want to see our state blossom with national bicycle routes. And good examples exist to use as teaching aids. So potentially, wiki pages plus state coordinators being email introduced to interested OSM mappers means that mapping United States bicycle routes could almost happen on autopilot. I mean, that is to say, you know, with minimal intervention. After Carrie's email introduction of an OSM mapper to state route coordinators, the OSM mapper receives the specified route data and then just reads a couple wiki pages. And after that, it's go. By mid-October, we make such a solicitation post to Talk US with a couple dozen proposed routes that need some mapper love, and we only receive a, a trickle of interested parties, just a couple people during the first week. And by the end of October, I see that there's this get-ahead strategy, and that's to seed routes in blank states with active projects. Help novice mappers by creating the route relation with proper tags and a few, a few members, then you let other mappers enter the rest of the route simply by adding the remaining members. And this proves to be a good model, as it works well with both novices and seasoned mappers. It took Kerry some effort to pull together all of the routing data, which were usually like text-based turn-by-turn directions in those states where he could, but it was well worth it, because what you end up with is a display of something, you know, not blank, and as a stub on the map. Um, and by mid-November, the seeding that we needed to do for all the blank state routes where proposed routes exist is done. And, and Kerry literally now sees the value in doing this. So seeing the seeds blossom on the map helps Kerry and I understand that this gives OpenStreetMap mappers an incentive. Their reward for volunteering to enter route data literally turns into a tangible, visible result as a proposed route on the map. Kerry also absorbs that the wiki, as a documenter of both how and as a live status report mechanism, allows pretty much self-sustaining questions to be both, both asked and answered via that wiki. And so this all comes together so Kerry can realize that his goal of uniting state projects with, with mappers is, is actually on track and it can really happen. And I take on a few projects myself due to the lack of, of robust response from the October Talk US post, but I don't mind the work involved. I, I kind of keep an open mind towards what experiences am I going to get and, and use it as a learning opportunity. Um, in New Mexico, USBR 66, that, one, that project emerged as a way to be a good OSM ambassador by keeping the Department of Transportation staffer and, and a volunteer bicycle advocate apprised of progress in OpenStreetMap. There, there were 800 kilometers of, of route and it took a few weeks of input. New Mexico was a good trial run of how to coordinate with, with um, DOTs and state bicycle volunteers who map, and some already entered USBR data, which nicely integrated with our efforts. This, this showed OSM in a positive light as a useful tool, like, like a new light in a dark corner, um, shining even brighter. In Tennessee, I myself entered the entire route over two days, simply to see how much work it would be, um, like between one and two days' work. Um, knowing how much work you're asking other people to do is important from a, from a fairness point of view. Um, and it helps to be able to accurately answer a volunteer's question of, you know, how much effort is this going to be? And the California effort had at least a dozen people involved. Multiple existing OpenStreetMap mappers, middle high ranking regional urban planning personnel, multiple wide area bicycle routing advocacy groups, the cartography department of ACA, even a United States Marine Corps base in the California desert that might still offer explicit access permission to long distance bicyclists. USBR 66 in California is an active, vibrant project, still in its relatively early stages, as it'll take several years to complete. Um, there's just scores of jurisdictions involved, it's crazy. Yet, as this 
project progresses, OpenStreetMap is now rather widely agreed to be an excellent geographical visualization tool for all of these participants, as well as the public at large. By mid-December, new statewide route proposals in the Midwest cause us to sharpen up yet another Talk US request for OpenStreetMap volunteers. We have some OpenStreetMap tools like the message function and the history function, but you know, what's the best way to do this? Um, we, had to, we had to carefully craft how we would request help from others. What this does is it, it diffuses the actual work of getting and updating routes across a larger pool of volunteers. By January, we hit a bit of pay dearth with more volunteers who step up. And Kerry well characterizes, um, you know, this, this phase two project is now running under its own steam. He basically says, we have two open street map tasks in front of us regarding um, the United States bicycle routing system, documenting proposed routes and documenting approved routes. So now Adventure Cycling Association has a method to do that via OpenStreetMap. It even has many volunteers working towards the same agreed upon, well articulated and well understood goal. The eventual completion of the US bicycle route system while rather vividly communicating the, the wide public intentions of the route proposals. And recently ACA published a second OpenStreetMap related blog article outlining not only ACA's own role in the US BRS, but how ACA is now partnering with OpenStreetMap, <laughs> via me basically, um, but other statewide volunteers, to display the United States bicycle route system. And the message, OpenStreetMap now accurately expresses the United States bicycle route system with the latest information as it is continuously updated. There's links, a live cycle map right in the web page keys, legends, and so on. It, it's very cool. Um, of course, there remain opportunities and new frontiers for the future in a similar vein, the regional and local cycleway network namespaces in the United States. These might be characterized as under construction, and while a great deal of work remains to do, a great deal of work has already been completed. Finally, the eventual completion of the entire nationwide system of United States bicycle routes now has a well-defined method for mapping both proposed routes as they evolve, as well as existing and yet to be approved routes. Thanks. So what did we learn? Well, we primarily learned that OpenStreetMap is effective as a powerful tool in a methodology of public input geographical visioning. It allows both actual and proposed entities to be developed and documented in a growing system that contains many moving parts and dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of participants. Part of this consists of being a good architect or project manager, as I did. Part of it is waving a baton and acting like a conductor or composer, as Carrie did. Yes, it's also a bit like herding cats, which is what it feels like to get volunteers to help play the music. Largely speaking, we did this by leveraging existing tool chains, software stacks, and, and project processes. We also learned that OpenStreetMap can be breakthrough, even disruptive technology. OCM renderings today are a de facto, though not necessarily de jour, statement of what is in the US regarding national bicycle routing. This feels to many, especially at ACA, like a breakthrough. And I cautiously use the word disruptive, but I've seen OpenStreetMap have that effect, and not just in this project. When this potential disruption happens, the results have been quite positive. In short, if you want a geographical visualization tool that is highly potent, especially if you can leverage existing renderers or easily make your own, go OSM. It's wide democratic availability and nearly self-documenting participation once you get a process established. It just truly can't be rivaled. Um, this concludes our presentation today. In a moment, I'll take questions. A bit about me, I'm a principal in a software consultancy in Santa Cruz, California. Um, where Best of OSM bestowed a Gold Star Award, one of only a handful of places in North America to earn this accolade, um, as well as what might be called the accolade of near-perfect land use. So take a look at OpenStreetMap's wiki page for our little county, Santa Cruz. And I've been a software professional there for about 30 years, and I am, as we say, available. Um, thank you for this opportunity for your attention today, and I'm happy to take questions.